Hello there folks, this is uh, VM Explorer and this is a video on case selection for my uh, Gen 5, the quest for more cores, home lab build. That's right, I've been through at least five or six different generations of home labs and now we're getting into the fifth generation, which is the, uh, the case on the left there. But uh, first off, I wanted to talk about a little bit about the case in the middle. That's an Antec Sonnet case. Uh, believe it or not, that case is from 2003. And I've actually used it for darn near five or almost six generation of home lobbing. Uh, started back in the day when uh, Pentium processors were just coming out with the first hyper-threading and we were figuring it, out, figuring it all out. That's how old this case is. But it's been a great case uh, as far as a, a standard ATX motherboard, you know, a couple good uh, drives in it, things like that. It's always been... A solid case yeah, the lids broken but heck the thing's super old right um, you know a lot of space still has my old three and a half drive in it uh, but I've used it for many VMware builds uh, still has that piano black finish on the side uh, nice case unfortunately I've kind of stepped up a little bit with my uh, system board builds and have moved into a larger size which is the EATX size case or what we know as extended ATX now Extended ATX is nothing new. It's just uh, you got to have a case to support it. And when we look at these cases here, the one on the far right with the two drives on it, this case here, uh, that's actually a case by Fantex. Uh, it's the Etheru, Etheru Pro case. And I, I use it for uh, VMware Workstation and, and uh, basic computing. It's a nice case. Uh, a little bit expensive, especially if you're trying to build three at a time. And that's the first thing I really thought about with uh, case selection is I knew I wanted to go with an EATX system board. Uh, my existing uh, cases, the Antec cases, uh, I have three of those. They wouldn't fit this system board. So I had to look for something new. First one I went to was the Fantex case. Unfortunately, at $100 a pop, yeah, not exactly uh, a good price point. Uh, so I did some looking around and I uh, evaluated my system board a bit more. And that's what I decided to look at uh, this Rosewill case. Now, I'm not a big fan of Rosewill products. They're usually uh, low-end products, and uh, I haven't have found much value in them. However, this case is a little bit different. Uh, first off, it had a good price point. I was able to get this case. This is the far case on the left right here that we're talking about, this case here. Um, this particular case is called the Rise Glow because it has some uh, glowing uh, LED uh, fans in the front. Not exactly what I was looking for, but hey, it worked. It fit a lot of the different things. And we open up the case, so I'll show you what I'm talking about and why I made that choice over the Fantex case. So first off was price. I was able to get the case down to about uh, $53 US, which was a good price point. Uh, second, it fit uh, EATX system boards. Uh, third, it had vertical and horizontal mounting for uh uh, system cards. That was important because the type of system board I had had trouble getting video cards in. And when we talk about the motherboard, I'll explain that a little bit more and I'll, I'll show you some of that vertical mounts. But let's start with the front of the case. As you can see in the front, there are actually three large fans in there. I think they're 120 millimeter. I'm sure all the case tuners and stuff will, will argue with me a little bit, but I think they're like 120 millimeter fans. Not really important to me. It does have three fans in the front. And what's nice about it is you can simply push on it take it off and there's your fans you can clean the screen out if you want nice honeycomb pattern good for airflow and uh, the one I have already built right now the airflow was quite impressive uh, the amount of air coming out the case was uh, was pretty uh, was pretty decent now as we start moving towards the top of the case we notice there is a, a control panel on the top and that's pretty nice for uh, for running servers in the home I can plug stuff in the only problem is if I stick something on top of here, like a switch or something, it's probably not going to be very good. But we'll start with a power button, which illuminates. Then we move into a reset button, which is uh, uh, right next to it here. And they click, which is great. I like the clicking. You know, that's kind of nice. Uh, you actually know you're pressing something, right? Uh, move into a few audio selections, some USB ports. We got the, uh, the three O's and the two O's, right? And then we got a fan control here, which is uh, high off and low. Usually I just run it in low, low lighting. It works fine for what I do and what I'm going to be planning to do. So buying three of these isn't too bad. And then also there's a big, huge section on top here 
uh, for a fan radiator. If you notice, there's uh, four case screws sitting here, uh, and that's actually because the back of the panel, and as you move around to the side and come around to the back, the back of the panel here actually has four case screws from top to bottom on both sides. And like I said in my previous video, either the guy who invented this case was a uh, uh, a mad genius or an insane lunatic. I, I think it's genius. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily need four case screws, but uh, there's some other features here I like. For example, we have a top mounted power supply or a bottom mounted power supply. But what's nice about it is I can take this bracket out of here for the top, okay, put my top power supply in if I want, or, and then move that bracket down to the bottom and cover the hole. So that's nice. Or if I had a system board with EATX and needed a du dual power supply mount, I could do that as well. Top and bottom, two power supplies, not too bad. Good size exhaust fan, you know, your slot cover for your motherboards, and then also your slot covers for your, your cards. Now here's what's nice. We've got horizontal mounted cards, and we got vertical mounted cards. So I guess the, the idea behind this, uh, the reason why they're doing a lot of this uh, vertical mounting of cards is so that you can um, uh, actually put your video card here, right, if you want to, and then on the side where you got your acrylic, you can actually see your video card and show it off to all your buddies. Well, for me, I'm not really into doing high-end gaming. This is more about doing uh, ESXi in the home and virtualization. But what's nice about this is I'll be able to mount my video card right here and then use a uh, like one of those Bitcoin uh, video extenders and then run a USB cable down to the PCI card spot. And the reason why is the the where area where their PCI one slots, they're so tight, they bump into the motherboard. That is the video card do. But being able to do this and plug it in here, I can now get my video card out of the way. I can still use that uh, PCI one port and uh, life is good. But we'll uh, we'll explain that a little bit more when we get into the uh, the motherboard video. So let's move around to the side. As you can see, this case hasn't been opened uh, as far as uh, a lot of the things have not been removed, like the acrylic side panel here. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that come inside the case that are a little frustrating. So this is actually the bag of uh, nuts and bolts. And I was actually fortunate in, th in this one. As you can see, it's kind of torn here, right? So they run their thumb right through this bag for some reason, and, and it gets torn up. And then what they do is they actually zip tie it on the inside of the case panel down over here and right down in here and it's a little hard to see I know that a little dark but uh, right here is the zip tie they zip tie this bag right on here with all these screws in there leave a big hole in the bag and then go I've actually had one of these where there's like every single bolt there are two bolts left in the bag the rest were in the case and it was everywhere what a mess uh, so hopefully you won't have to experience that. Uh, I was lucky on this case, only one or two bolts fell out, uh, but I have a third one to open up yet, and I'm sure we're going to find bolts everywhere. Now, uh, looking into the case, uh, not a bad design. Uh, one of the things you might notice about it here is this really large bar that goes from top to bottom. Now, uh, in the previous video, I talked a little bit about this, but what this is, is this is actually an uh, area where you can mount up to four drives. It's a great idea. You know, you can put four drives in there. It kind of gets them out of the way. we got a really deep case, right? I mean, um, really deep here. And you can actually, uh, you know, fit these drives on here. The problem is it gets a little tight down here towards the bottom where there's another drive bay. So as we remove, as we remove this plate out of here, there'd be actually two more drive bays down below. So we we'll went ahead and removed the screws and actually the uh, bar here for the drives. And as you can see, uh, there's these nice rubber grommets on here for your three and a half drives and hold mounting holes for your two and a half inch drives. One of the challenges I found when I was starting to work with this is, you know, working with these SSDs, which it's nice. Uh, when you mount them on here and you put them on the holes and line them up, they get really close to the edge here. The problem becomes is it's difficult to get the power connectors in there and not run into the metal. I actually had to cut grooves out of mine just so I can get my power connectors and my uh, SATA uh, uh, drive, uh, sorry, SATA cables in there, <laughs> trying to speak. Uh, but that's one challenge on these. So though it's nice, uh, and the other challenge is, like I said, it's, it's right in front of this drive bay. It mounts uh, vertically right here and you can't get to these drives unless you take the whole bar out. So one of the things I noticed was, and this isn't in the manual, if you'll notice here, there's uh, four screws that hold this uh, mount plate on. Well, if you notice it, there's uh, four 
screw mount holes over here as well. So what you can actually do is take this plate and the bottom plate out, move it to this location right here, and now you can mount that bar this way. That's great, because now you get your four drives right here, and then you can use your other two bays for discs. So not a bad deal. Now one of the other challenges is, as you notice as we go to the front here, it has two five and a quarter inch bays, and, and that's nice. That's that's a nice feature, and it has a floppy drive mount here <laughs> as well. Uh, but the problem is, is that we're working with EATX system boards. Now, they're going to require four holes, and as you can see right here, there's number one, two, and three. The fourth hole hits right about the edge of this mount bracket. So you actually have to take this entire CAN unit out and that's what I'm showing you here. This one came out of the other unit. It's not too difficult. There's several holes that you're going to, or several screws you're going to have to take out, but you will have to take this piece out if you want it to actually uh, uh, get your extended ATX system board in. Once you get your board in, the other challenge I ran into, and, and this could be just the board I was dealing with, is, is that these mounts right here, my system board didn't have screws for. In fact, they were more like about in this area. So what I had to do is I wanted to make sure that they were properly supported, because we've got holes that are past here, and there's no mounts for ETX, right? And there's a hole here on the system board and no uh, mount post, right? Uh, so I bought some plastic mount posts and put them in the holes in the system board so it would have nice support on it. Uh, other than that, let's take off the uh, other side panel here. We'll take a look at that, and that's kind of nice. There goes another screw. <laughs> I'm sure it, it came from uh, falling out of the bag again. I've been finding ones here and there, so make sure you shake your case uh, really well when you get this case. You definitely there are loose screws uh, uh, hiding. Also check behind the fans. I found a few that actually hid in there. Um, so they they, uh, they do get around. All right, here comes the side panel. Boom. All right, what's nice about this is there's actually uh, two mounts right here. There's mount one and mount two. And those are for two more hard drives. Nice big areas behind here to run cables. Uh, there's a fan thing controller here, which is nice. A lot of access for getting things through. Uh, a lot of nice holes, a lot of extra areas like right here so that you could actually run zip ties and move stuff through. So all in all, I'd say universally, uh, this case was a good selection for what I want to do with it. It had a good price point. Uh, it uh, is very flexible. I can put a lot of different system boards in it. Uh, I can do vertical and horizontal mounted uh, uh, card, which is nice. I can run a boatload of drives. I think we figured out this is uh, four, five, six, seven, eight discs in this system. Um, and that's good too, especially if you're running like vSAN or those types of things. So I think buying three of these at a price point of around $50, $55 is, uh, is a good value for what I need it for. And I think it's going to work out quite well. So guys, this is, concludes the uh, video on case selection for Gen 5 Home Lab. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Take care.